Live from Santa Barbara, welcome to Compassion and Connection. I'm your host, Gigi Amora. The purpose of our show is to share with you how to communicate effectively within ourselves and with others when we choose to gain the knowledge of this language of compassion. What I'd like to reflect on is that this is a language created by Dr. Rosenberg, and here is a picture of his most popular global book, and this is about nonviolent communication, the language of life, the language of peace, and this is in 25 languages and perhaps 54 countries as well, which is very impressive and helps us to enrich and to really contribute to our collective consciousness that we're all working on. Now with that being said, I'm really excited tonight. We're gonna have a great guest with us, of course, a dear friend and wonderful, knowledgeable person on communication skills, I may add. Heba, hi. <laughs> hi, Gigi. Now I'm gonna talk about you, how about that? <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight. Oh. It's a pleasure and honor to have you with us. Same here. Thank you so much. Now, for our studio audience, I'd just like to say tonight's show is going to be on The Secret. And uh, this is going to be about how we can get our needs met and contribute in a loving, harmonious way. So now a bit about HEPA. She is an, electro, an electrical engineer who has worked for two of the largest telecommunication companies, airline communication and networking, where she managed international teams and large scale projects in the billion dollars. Throughout her 20 year career, HEPA provided technical training in Europe, Asia and North America. In March of 2008, HIPAA founded her own consulting and coaching business in Redondo Beach, California. Since then, she's been helping her clients skyrocket to their successes. And now in Los Angeles, HIPAA was on the board of the National Speakers Association from 2012 until 2015 when she moved with her husband to her beautiful city here in Santa Barbara, I may add. <laughs> and in order to really meet new friends and better know her new city here, HIPAA started to volunteer at our television station right here in Santa Barbara, where she learned about media from her wonderful mentors. And in 2017, HIPAA took part-time job in the station as the director of media programming. Now, HIPAA is co-author of the Amazon number one bestseller book, World Class Speaking in Action. And she speaks English, French, Arabic, 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 and Spanish. Oh my, I, I guess where I've been. So, um, welcome, HIPAA. Thank you for being with us. And Thank you for having me, Gigi. It's an honor. And this is going to be fall. so, I mean, the law of attraction, let me get that right, 2.0. <laughs> this is hot. This is like we all want to create the life that we want to live. And yes. so I'm excited that we're going to go ahead and explore this. And I know you have a lot to say, so I want to get going with this. <laughs> I know that everybody seems to know about the law of attraction, but for the benefit of our readers, let's say, who perhaps might not be up on this, can you explain this for us all to understand? Uh, well, Gigi, as uh, Rhonda Byrne, who wrote and published the book The Secret, defined it, is that our thoughts become things. So everything we think about, feel, um, wish for, uh, write, would become and has the possibility to materialize in our life. 
It's a big self-responsibility to be mindful of the thoughts that we think throughout yes. our days. Yes, correct. And this has a scientific background. It's not just, ah, oh, okay, I'll pray for it and it happens. Uh, this uh, works on the science of the subconscious. Our subconscious, which is part of the brain, that w more works when we are asleep. And uh, this would kick off some uh, power in us, energy, to help us bring to life whatever we're really and deeply and strongly thinking of. So it's the subconscious mind and the law of attraction deals with how to activate that power of the subconscious mind. Oh boy, <laughs> that in itself is a lot for all of us to think about, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I'll explain more later uh, as we progress with our discussion uh, why I call it 2.0, it's like the updated version it's like a software yeah. so like a microsoft new release um, and it is the first time for me to share my thoughts about this from my real life experiences the experiences i've gone through uh, even before i got to know about the law of attraction or hear about it even that's very interesting i understand what you say uh, okay, so let's explore how you came to learn about this law of attraction. Um, it was uh, first um, when uh, Rhonda Byrne published The Secret, which was in the year 2006. And I um, heard about it, read the book, was um, fascinated by the video that she did the interviews with uh, great uh, thinkers and uh, people, um, action-oriented, uh, knowledgeable about the success in life, like for example, Jack Canfield, who is, by the way, a local here in Santa Barbara. Yeah. Uh, he lives in Santa Barbara. Uh, so I read more and more about it. And uh, then I started to think to what had past uh, before in my life and how things manifested uh, during the years that passed before 2006. Uh, so first let me explain about what uh, the steps, if you'd like, to activate the law of attraction uh, briefly based on the book The Secret or some other writings and many books that came after or probably before. Uh, there are three main steps, and uh, these are ask, believe, and receive. Believe is probably is the main point, is mainly what goes on here, to have this law works for us. And uh, it, uh, it would um, uh, reflect either on a positive side or on a negative side. Like if you think positively and focus about creating a uh, positive result in your life, then you start attracting positive people, uh, positive inputs, everything positively that enhances this positive results. But it works on the negative side as well. Uh, if we are depressed, uh, if we uh, hold uh, resentments, uh, then we would be attracting the negative into our life. It's like we're magnets. Whatever is going on inside can be drawn to us. Correct. So be careful. What do you want to attract, right? Correct. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, scientifically, it is proven that our bodies, when we live, um, it is a bunch of energy going on. And when the nerves communicate, it's like a computer uh, system altogether between the brain and the limbs and the body altogether. 
um, all um, uh, uh, this energy flowing through the nervous system or muscles or other parts of us as long as we live, as long as our heart beats. Um, and that creates an energy that we can direct in one direction or the other. And we hope that we can use it for the best and to improve our lives. And those around us, of course. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So, well, okay, let's explore. Were there times that this did not work so well? Uh, yes, uh, definitely. There was uh, few, uh, not only one time, but a uh, few times. But before uh, I tell you about these, uh, let me tell you about when it works. Please, <laughs> please, let's go with the positive, uh, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, it seems this law of attraction existed for so many years and many people in history since all times, since probably thousands of years ago, uh, they believed in it. They may have called it different names, but this law existed. And uh, even though uh, The Secret, the book and video were released in 2006, but I'm sure you know about another book that is called um, Think and Grow Rich. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that's another yeah. book that tells us and gives us the process on how to bring richness into our lives. And also it talks about the subconscious mind, it talks about the positive energy and attracting positive people, positive results, richness and all the good things into our lives. Um, so for me in my life, uh, when I was still uh, in Lebanon, I grew up was born, grew up in Lebanon. Uh, it was tough for me. I grew up during the Civil War, so that was 15 years of fighting. Uh, that, you know, like, kind of, it could have been a loss of these years of my life, except that I kept focusing and I kept studying and was able to finish my engineering degree in uh, Lebanon before I left. But uh, my family had lost uh, all, you know, uh, finances, lost money, and the war made us even poorer. So I didn't have the means uh, to go outside. I always wanted to go out and discover the world, get to know new, uh, places, new people, um, just discover. But I, I couldn't do it. And um, I used to scribble sometimes, you know, write ideas in my little book uh, and, you know, put places like I would like to, to go to America, I would look to Europe, I would like to travel. But then uh, it was in, uh, during college, I sometimes didn't have even money uh, to eat enough. I used to tutor uh, children, uh, give uh, lessons, um, and I uh, had a small uh, scholarship that was really, really small that just covered my rental at the dorms. Uh, so I you know, didn't have any means to, to, to go anywhere but just wrote these ideas of what I wish for. And I thought like I was daydreaming. Yes. I, I studied yeah. French and there was this book called Reverie, Reverie you know, like daylight <laughs> dreaming, kind of. Uh, so I said, okay, you know, why not dream? Uh, somehow, uh, when I finished college, I got hired by the uh, Lebanese Airlines, which is called Middle East Airlines. It used to be called Air Lebanon, but then they changed the name to um, Middle East Airlines. And it was the result of hard work that, that I got there. And I, at first, I, I was uh, very disappointed. I wanted, you know, like to go to France or whatever. Uh, but I said, well, it's 
uh, one of the best, if, if not the best company then in Lebanon. Uh, so, okay, I will stay, work, uh, do uh, whatever engineering task I do. And I didn't pay much attention then what's going on, uh, but uh, somebody heard about me and uh, they sent reporters from one of the largest magazines, local magazines uh, in Lebanon, in Beirut. And uh, they did an article about me as the first female engineer uh, to work in the field, fix equipment, fi fix computers at the airport of Lebanon. Nice. Uh, now then, you know, I, I didn't think much about it. Uh, you see, I grew up in a family where, you know, my mom was so humble. We, we didn't make a big fuss about high education or whatever. Uh, that used to be the case in my family. So I said, ah, okay, an article, so what? But then uh, this opportunity to work at the airport uh, first allowed me to uh, travel internationally. I was sent on business and to fix equipment for Middle East Airlines offices like in Athens, we did training in Paris, uh, went to Rome, other places, and I got a free plane ticket anywhere in the world, even for my mom and half price for my sister. So I was traveling. So somehow something of what I had written uh, occurred, but I didn't think of it much uh, then until I heard about the law of attraction. And somehow that job helped me move to North America. It was because I have an engineering degree, it was because I worked in the airlines uh, business that I got hired by CETA, which is like a French abbreviation, it's an international company, huge. Uh, it has more than 500 big airlines as members like uh, Air France, British Airways, Lufthansa, oh Swiss Air, Singapore Airlines, all are members of CETA because that company created the worldwide network uh, yes. to, uh, for these companies to c communicate and network long before uh, the internet time. So they created a kind of private internet uh, since the 60s for the airlines. Yeah, even, yes. you know, uh, mid 50s. Yeah, so you were on board. Yeah, everything was coming through without really acknowledging what you had done until looking back and yes. reviewing. Yes, yes. Uh, another uh, example of how the the law of of attraction um, worked for me is that. Um, when I was in Montreal, and I love Montreal, and it's my second hometown, and I have family members that uh, live there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, they went after I, I went. When I went to Montreal, by the way, I was on my own. It's just left uh, to work there and to, to check what's out there. Uh, so uh, I, I was okay, but because I am a born Mediterranean in, you know, an area that resembles to California. The weather in Lebanon is like California. So I loved Montreal, I loved Canada, but uh, the weather was too harsh on me. And oh, I, I had already some health issues because as I had mentioned, I grew up in the war and with poverty, not good nutrition at times or bad conditions, you know, uh, b being cold in the winter. Uh, so my health wasn't, wasn't that strong. So that didn't help me either. And I wanted to go somewhere where it's warmer. So I thought, ah, okay, probably I can get a job in uh, British Columbia, Vancouver. Because even though my situation got better, but still um, wasn't that rich or didn't have that money or didn't inherit any money, so that I can come to the US, a capital country where you, know, you need to stand up on your feet and just go be able to do it. So that idea 
didn't even occur to me. Um, and it happened, so I said, okay, let me look for a job uh, somewhere else. And I happened to see in one of the airports in the U.S. a book that's called What Color Is Your Parachute? I have that one on my bookshelf too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so I bought that book from the airport and they issue a, a release for each year. They update all the, the websites, the links and everything. Uh, and uh, the, the picture that Fred is showing is for next year. It's already oh published. Can it's you already. believe it? <laughs> yeah, so it's a big book. I didn't go through all of it and didn't look much and, and the links, whatever. But what I liked was a table where, uh, and I got a large size of blank paper and I put the table, uh, handwritten it. And uh, it, uh, the book tells you to, to put what place would you like to be? What is the condition would you like to be? Um, what type of work and as much details, you know, as much l lower in depth you can go, that would be better. And to write these ideas. So I wrote, you know, sunny place, um, etc. And uh, all, you know, my thoughts were towards Vancouver or anywhere in British Columbia, which is the warmest province yes. in Canada, I think. Uh, I left that paper and said, okay, kept looking and asked, you know, for job interviews, wanted to move within the same company because I loved CETA. It was a wonderful company to work for with great, great benefits and also the free tickets plus sending you to training and business all around the world, management meetings uh, everywhere. So I... Um, uh, just, you know, didn't think any more about that table I put together. And just exactly a year and a half later, I got the job in the U.S. Oh, wonderful. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it worked. <laughs> At that time, yes. again, yeah. I didn't make the connection. I thought like I'm writing, okay, scribbling, you know, whatever I'm thinking of or just goals. Yes. I didn't think it would influence anything. Well, that's a good point. Things don't happen immediately. Yes. Yeah. So here, Gigi, I will address the point when, you know, the quest, your question about if the law of attraction sometimes didn't work. Right. Uh, it did work, but uh, at the time, like, when I first saw the three steps, ask, believe, receive, I thought, I mean, why they included receive? I mean, okay, you receive, you celebrate, that's fine. Okay, so what? <laughs> <laughs> but as it happened, it is very important uh, because it depends what we receive. The universe may send us signals, may send us offers, but we may pick the wrong uh, way to go or we would have the wrong choice. Um, for uh, my job, uh, w when they offered me uh, to come to the U.S., uh, they said, ah, we have exactly the same positions one in California, Los Angeles, California, one in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so what did I say? <laughs> of course, Atlanta. <laughs> oh my, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I hadn't heard how beautiful the weather is here. Yes. I only heard about earthquakes. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> Didn't want to go down with the rest of us. I get it. <laughs> yeah. I was, you know, speaking with Michael earlier and telling him about California. And he said, ah, oh, didn't they tell you also about uh, fires? I said, uh, <laughs> fortunately, at that time, there weren't as today, unfortunately. Yeah. 
and our heart is with all the areas uh, that have fire at this time. Uh, so I left to Atlanta, Georgia, and I love Atlanta. People are so wonderful, so nice, so kind. Uh, but I didn't know anybody there. I felt so lonely. I wasn't married then. My best friend was still in uh, Canada. Uh, we communicated all the time. And I started to feel, ah, uh, I miss him. And uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, we may be more than just friends. And he was also suggesting the same thing. So we decided to get married. Uh, during the time we were apart and uh, he said uh, I, I said I go back to Canada if you'd like um, probably Sita would offer me my job back or another job uh, they had a lot of jobs there but he said um, if you want to stay in the US and uh, for me if that job they had offered you in Los Angeles California if it's still there I can find a better job in California he is in the medical engineering, and he used to come to Los Angeles for training with many local companies uh, in the area. So I said, I'll check. <laughs> oh, perfect. Now, did, was that part of your plan? Was that part of what you, some no. people would say, manifested in or no, what no. have you? Uh, and yeah. never, never thought about it and said, okay, I'm the U.S., great and Atlanta is sunny except you know three months in the winter a little bit uh, uh, um, uh, wintry and rainy but it's nothing compared to Montreal with the te low temperatures you know the the below 20 below zero <laughs> you name it uh, and for me health wise it was much better and I loved uh, the pine trees there because I grew up with pine trees in the Mediterranean oh, beautiful. in Lebanon so it's just being lonely and with my husband knowing no one uh, and it wouldn't be the same opportunities for him uh, to find jobs there I thought no okay Los Angeles and we'll survive earthquakes that's okay <laughs> do it together <laughs> yes <laughs> Well, luckily, the job was still there, and luckily, my company appreciated my hard work and everything, and transferred me again with my furniture and car and everything, oh and difference in salary because you know California is more expensive, uh, expensive than Georgia. Uh, so thank God, I mean, with this, uh, I was blessed. Uh, came in here, saw the great weather, and uh, I, I have relatives in the LA area. Pasadena. Oh, nice. And, uh, oh, wonderful. Other places. I said, why didn't you tell me <laughs> before? Yes, so yeah, so I could have <laughs> taken a shortcut <laughs> over, but how it worked out, it you had more of an adventure because you did think about traveling and living in other places. So you got a feel of everything. And now yes. you're really in gratitude that you found my hometown yes <laughs> exactly i love it and see so the receive part i received but it wasn't the good fit for me and for my happiness or future with my husband thankfully i was able to adjust and receive what hopefully has been meant to me well, I mean, 20 years after being in California, <laughs> yes. Yes. I think this oh. was meant to be. So we need to make sure we receive what is proper, what is fit to us, and what goes better towards our uh, better future, happiness, and being well, being happy. You, and that's another thing. If people will pay another person a compliment, a lot of times they're, oh, oh, let it go. Hey, receive it. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. It's just those little things add up and make way for the bigger things to flow through. It, Absolutely. It's part of that concept. Absolutely, yes. I like and that. I didn't know this back in uh, 
1999 <laughs> before I came in. You had the formula to, uh, down. California. You didn't even know it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So what would you suggest to have the law of attraction work better for us all? Um, what we can do, um, Gigi, instead of just you know, ask, wish for it, and drive these vision boards, etc., believe and then receive. I think after really believing uh, that we, we are worth it and we can be happy, we can make a better life, uh, I think at that stage we need to find a tune to the universe to see what's really good for us, what really makes our happiness. Uh, so, um, what I would say is, we ask, we believe, but we need to act also. For me, I wouldn't have gotten the job in California just within six months, within half a year, if it wasn't for that hard work I put in my company in Atlanta, and before that in Montreal, Canada. Uh, so we need to act on it and uh, just leave it but act on it and then tune to what's normal to us fit better fit and then receive so what I would suggest is ask believe act tune in and then receive so this is kind of 2.0 <laughs> version I love two. It. That is great. I like that you came up with that. And the awareness that it, it all worked out and for you to sit here and share with us how it played out in your life. That's incredible because it may make other people more aware of how they have more thinking power for the future that they would enjoy living. Yes, definitely. Anybody can activate the law of attraction in their life. Um, there is no limit, no, not age limit, not uh, uh, finances, and, and, and not location. Anywhere you are, you can activate this. It's just believe it and act on it and then be ready to receive what really uh, makes your life better. Anyone, even people in their 90s. <laughs> oh, it's never too late, folks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever they, they wish for. Now, the, the, the thing that doesn't work and that also was uh, an unfortunate, um, uh, I would say, uh, occurrence in, in my life, uh, but I'm not sure how this will turn in the future. Uh, was that um, when my husband and I wanted to have children, I tried to uh, work on the law of attraction. And uh, there were some issues on both sides, and then we had a treatment, and uh, then uh, the first time didn't work, I, I thought probably I didn't focus enough, and then the second time, I uh, did buy the book, you know, I bought all what's related to the law of traction. I had already the, the secret, it had just recently came out then, when, you know, um, uh, we were trying for children uh, in 2006, and uh, bought other books and did it the way they asked to. For example, uh, when you write your wishes, it's better if you write them in the present time, as if they happened already. Yes. So yes. I had my notes, and um, I, I still have them somewhere in, in one of the boxes because we moved <laughs> houses. <laughs> so 
so it's in one of the boxes but i still have it but i wrote you know like um whatever it is august something um august this year uh i'm now holding my baby and just you know happy things like that i even bought few babies items um the cute um, you know either um puppies um uh, stuff puppies or uh, uh socks or oh, oh. Uh, towels yeah just few things i didn't go yeah. overboard <laughs> but just few things as if this will really happen uh in nine months and this was after uh the doctor said ah, okay the pregnancy is there uh but we don't know we'll, we'll see uh unfortunately it didn't work out uh and that brought to my attention a fact that okay we may control our subconscious somehow and our power and energy to do things but what if that wish we wish for is dependent on other people or on a higher power yeah you may call it god the cosmic power uh, i like to call it uh, natural power power of na nature the power of what's i think guiding us uh, we can push ourselves but up to a certain limit to what we can do within our limited powers as humans so being able to accept what is really going on regardless that that's a good way to look at it huh yeah accept it and also you know like there is a physical limitation i mean okay you cannot uh do it or you cannot give birth there might be an alternative which is for example to adopt children yes. which is great that's an alternative um if you you said uh, you you know about the book think and grow rich and the author explains uh his case with his son uh who uh, was i if i remember correctly couldn't hear i think he was deaf and uh, they progress but up to a certain level i mean you cannot just make that person hear 100% again there's the limitations in yes. nature like you said yes and if we can say for example ah oh, okay i can fly and go jump over the building and will not fly and the net will not appear <laughs> Okay, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> Don't try that trick. <laughs> Don't try it literally. <laughs> so, uh there is a limitation, but whatever is in our power to do, which is better work, uh bring in uh richness to our life whether in money or in different uh other ways, um that we can activate the law of attraction for uh but not the the supernatural cosmic powers changing these or not uh sometimes changing other people's the example <laughs> i used to joke about is I, i can write as many books you know book notebooks and Uh, stay nice thinking meditating <laughs> that, that Brad Pitt will fall in love with me but oh. Brad Pitt will <laughs> would never I oh. how oh. he's not my kind <laughs> oh. oh there you go that's why never <laughs> I I you know I'm not convinced you see but still he may have his own law of attraction and he may want to activate it towards somebody else and yes. that's somebody else or somebody else so we go in a loop we waste our energy mm. if it's to influence somebody else 
But we can work on ourselves, make ourselves better and happier, and that will attract people. And hopefully, the person you dream about or you would like to marry or whomever. Will show I got up. My husband. <laughs> oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and Fred just showed uh, a picture as a, an example of, you know, um, uh, how the law of attraction works. And uh, that is a mock-up picture. The picture is, is true, but not the magazine. Uh, I wasn't on the cover of the World Executive's Digest. Oh. Uh, they made this for us when I was on a business meeting in the Philippines, in Manila. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, with CETA, we had a group user meeting with the Philippine Airlines. They hosted that meeting. And uh, so they printed the pictures as if, you know, it's a cover of a, you know, like big time uh, international uh, magazine. Uh, uh, I didn't pay attention to it and just, you know, put it. And then my late sister at the time, she was happy to have it. And she, you know, framed it, hang it on the wall. After my sister passed, I took that picture back from my brother-in-law and then hang it at, uh, at home. Oh. And somehow, <laughs> that's beautiful. That picture kind of brought it, it brought great memories of my late sister to me. Yes. But somehow it brought positive result, positive energy to me. Like for example, tonight I'm being interviewed by <laughs> the greatest <laughs> Gigi Amor. <laughs> So, not on the cover of the Executive Digest, but on Compassion Connection. But how fun, how fun that you're enjoying everything that you do. I think that's part of it too. Definitely. Positive energy. Yeah. Within yourself, you're happy and that's where it really starts. I think that's a big, not, not to just be aware of how mindful we are because everybody's got their little you know, ups and downs, <laughs> let's say, right? Throughout yes. the day, you know, what is it? Is it your diet, your nutrition, your <laughs> exercise, your thinking? Mm. Yes, yes, exactly. So it's so, a daily a type of exercise, minute by minute, to keep conscientious of as best that all of us can. Correct. But uh, we don't have to overdo it. Like I know friends who um, um, would have their vision board and it's too crowded for me. Uh, now the subconscious mind works better um, if we see the thing, not only think about it and uh, you know, think is a first step, then writing it another. And if you can have a picture that would be even better. So it's okay to have a vision board, but don't complicate it. And um, if it's not a daily thing, at least a monthly thing, just review your goals in life and your wishes and write them down. If you have a picture of a beautiful house you wish to have, ha you know, take that picture and uh, put it someplace nearby you or on a vision board. And you never know, you know, positive energies may bring it to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And here, uh, talking about houses, uh, I have another example of how the law of attraction works uh, uh, for me. Uh, it was when we were in the process of moving to Santa Barbara. And we moved in here uh, after an unfortunate event which became like a blessing, which was, you know, like a blessing in disguise. Uh, my uh, husband's company, the company he used to work for, for 15 years, got bought, purchased by a larger company in the East Coast. And they laid off most of the employees and then the, the few who remained laid them off in the second round. So uh, my husband lost his job. But within a month, he was offered a job here uh, in Santa Barbara. Uh, so uh, <laughs> That's a blessing. It is a blessing, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and to give, while we're talking about it, to give you another example about the receive, 
He was also offered another job in the LA area, uh, in Torrance, where all uh, the uh, the Japanese companies uh, like Toyota, Honda, they, they had their headquarters in there. Now, no longer, unfortunately, they moved uh, elsewhere. Uh, but uh, he was offered a job there, and we could have not uh, sold our house in the LA area and stayed there. But it wasn't a perfect job for my husband. And for me, I loved the area where we used to be in Redondo Beach, beautiful place. But I loved Santa Barbara way more. I loved it for years before we moved in here. So here again, to tune in and receive mm -hmm. what fits better. So instead of that other job, my husband accepted the job in Santa Barbara. It wasn't easy to move here, but we managed to do it. It was very, very stressful with selling our house, looking for rental, then with all, you know, the, the trouble and all what to do because we had been in Redondo already for 13 years. We're well settled in and sometimes we get comfortable in being uncomfortable. So it took tremendous courage to go forward with what you had manifested in, right? Yes, yes. And uh, it wasn't uncomfortable, it was okay. Uh, Redondo is away from downtown, so we weren't stuck in tr big traffic. My work nice. was at the airport area, so I can take a small street, you know, a small road to go to work, and my husband also. But it's just, um, uh, I, uh, you know, we wanted something better to go. So uh, Fred is displaying now a picture of the map of Santa Barbara. So we were looking for rental. And uh, I would come in here with my husband and drive around Santa Barbara. And we studied the area and we said, ah, okay, this area where the X is, is uh, not in downtown exactly, where houses are smaller and more expensive, <laughs> and not too far from downtown. And at the same time, it's close to where my husband will be working. His work, his new workplace. And then I just scribbled on a, a napkin oh what, you know, the, the features of the rental, the, the house or apartment, whatever it is we want to rent. So I put, you know, approximate price and, you know, here it's pricey, <laughs> especially to, to have a place to, to, that we can fit all our furniture and things from a four bedroom in Redondo Beach. And I said, beautiful view, uh, you know, good to be close uh, to the ocean and quiet and everything. And all these all these features I wrote were exactly met in the rental house we had for two years before we purchased our house, moved to it. Exactly. Perfect. And I was Perfect. thinking just, you know, if I want to speak with a real estate agent, what would I tell her about the, the apartment or house we're looking for? So I said, okay, this and this. I kept it because I remembered about the law of attraction. And I said, let me see if this works. And sometimes it scares me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a beautiful example. So from the rental, did you get uh -huh. the dream house or, or the house that you put out as well? Uh, well, the, the rental, uh, uh, I added <laughs> to the list. Of course. <laughs> Now we have a pool and a helicopter yeah. pad. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> and oh, by the way, I didn't mention it was exactly in that area where I put the eggs. Oh my! Yeah, and someday I will have you know like a map that you can uh, or check Google and see if my eggs really yeah. falls in exactly where our house is. So when we wanted to buy a house, I already have this list, but I added to it. Uh, to have at least two bathrooms. Um, well, our house had three bathrooms, so very, very, the rental, very tiny bathrooms. And they didn't have windows. 
I like bathrooms with windows. I, I'm surprised. I mean, California, yeah, yeah. and the weather is great, and you can have windows. It's yes. not like in Canada, Montreal, where you know the snow and below zero temperatures, you need to block sometimes. So I added this to the list, and yes, it, it was close uh, to our dream house. And we were very, very close. Uh, to buying a house that wasn't a perfect fit, wasn't a perfect match. Just at the last minute, our agent said, uh, I have my friend at work who knows another friend, and she's selling the house after her husband passed away. She's moving to a senior community, and uh, the house isn't yet on the market. Are you interested? Perfect. Yeah. Yes, it fits the description. Yes. <laughs> Yes, so the version number two of the law of attraction is just tune in to what really fits you and make sure it's not about another person, it's about you becoming yes. better and healthier and happier um, and more giving and all the, the great features you wish to have. And um, who knows, you know, you may get an influence on that other person after, after you change or you, you get to a better place. It, it starts with self. Yes. That, that's a good point. But I can tell you this, you will never fly. <laughs> Don't try that one yet. <laughs> Probably in another hundred years. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> That's one of my expressions. Hi, I'm in flight right now. <laughs> I'll have to get back to you. Okay. <laughs> now she has wings. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, so th there is a lot of books and uh, YouTube videos and a lot of free tools available online. And you can check it in. And uh, if it's about a career or job, I recommend what color is your parachute. And uh, uh, by the way, I wonder about the, the title of that book. And then it was explained to me that you need to know the details uh, before you go to fly in a parachute, even up to the level of the color of your parachute. That's oh why my. he named it this way. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, either the secret, uh, uh, there are some writings by other authors, yes. check it out. Good stuff out there yeah. where people can have a happier life. Books on even starting how to be happy. And yes. that is to really go inside and think of what your heart really wants. Yes, yes. And even if you don't want to buy the book or watch the, the online videos, just have a piece of paper and write what you think of, what you wish for. And if you have a picture, that's even better. But just writing it make a big difference. And, and I think another thing is to keep that gratitude of everything you possibly can, no matter what the situation. Definitely. But you obviously have done that in your life. You've yes. kept that great attitude. And, Yes. Courageous, and that's part of it too, to take the action. Yes, to act on it, and when you receive, be grateful and celebrate. Yeah. Well, what a delight. It's very encouraging. This is a motivational show for, for folks that kind of are a little grounded right now and can reactivate. Yes. Because like you say, it can happen at any age. There you are scrambling around just <laughs> beginning right <laughs> that's uh, me starting with no money sometimes no food uh, and going to college to finish my engineering degree and by the way this um, little motorcycle um, was also a solution like kind of another activation of law of traction because I couldn't afford uh, to pay a certain amount to go to my college, to my university. And having the motorcycle then, 
saved me, like whatever I was supposed to pay for one day transportation back and forth from college to my dorms, or sometimes I would have to teach students to tutor. Uh, in one day, for the motorcycle, it can, uh, you know, say it can uh, go for one week on gas, or even more than one week. So imagine the savings, and so I was able to finish my college and keep where I am, uh, staying uh, at the beautiful dorms. And so being practical helps as well along the way, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And there you go. You know, and again, law of attraction, I wanted something to, I badly wanted to finish my studies so I can have a better opportunity. And probably then I, I wrote something. Uh, I, I wanted a solution and that brought positive thoughts and uh, friends, good friends. And somebody came to me and said, ah, there is uh, that student who wants to sell his used buy, uh, motorcycle. Would you like to buy it? And usually, at that time, you wouldn't ask a girl to buy a motorcycle. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was probably the second or third uh, in Lebanon, but um, it's, just, uh, it's just I went for it. And that open And that doors. is your message, right? Yes. Go for yes. it. Go for it. <laughs> Go for the, the sky's the limit, right? Exactly. No <laughs> matter where you are, no matter what education you've got, no matter how old you are, just go for it. And as long as it's in you, then ask and believe, act, tune in. And receive. Thank you. Thank you so much for helping us and evolving us to think and be aware. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Gigi. I'd just like to say to everyone, this is Heba, and you can check her out on Facebook.com, the Heba Ham Dan, right? Okay, with Wisdom for City. I know we're out of time. We enjoy doing this show. It's just been a delightful. We're in our 14th and a half year here, going strong with less guests, such as Heba tonight. And you can contact me, make all your little comments, 805-698-8233 or TV at gmail.com. Our show website, you can go and review, Compassionate Connection. Dot TV. So I would just like to say thank you for tuning in and for all of your support and enjoyment comments that I receive. And for all of our viewers, I'd like to wish all of you um, a very happy moments of connecting with what you want in life. Good evening.